you for the introduction. Um, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to give you a peek into the field of software effort estimation. And I'm going to show you how you can tackle the delays in your software deliveries. And I will also discuss um, why it's important to yeah, take a holistic approach to on-time software delivery. So we all know that late delivery and cost overruns have been common problems in the software industry for decades. Uh, on average, software projects run or, yeah, over time around uh, 30%. And this percentage does not seem to have decreased since the 1980s. And even though effort estimation is at the heart of almost all industries, it's especially challenging for the software industry because software development is a complex undertaking that is affected by a variety of uh, social and technical factors. Well, currently, most software companies, um, they rely on human experts' subjective assessment to arrive at an effort estimate. And human experts use their intuition, they use the rule of thumb, or they use generalized models. And research has shown that this may lead to inaccurate and inconsistent estimates. Because software development is, yeah, uh, there are too many unknowns and too many interrelated factors to reduce it to a gut feeling or to a rule of thumb. So we need to have a deeper understanding of the factors that play a role here, how they interact with each other, and we need to incorporate them into our effort estimation models to reduce the delay in software deliveries. So to investigate the most relevant factors and their interactions, we uh, performed case studies at ING. ING is a large Dutch internationally operating bank. And we used a mixed methods approach. So we combined um, qualitative survey data with quantitative repository data um, to, to corroborate the respondents' perceptions and to also validate, um, yeah, to, to, yeah, to validate their perceptions and to capture multiple perspectives on uh, the phenomenon of on-time software delivery. And we wanted to find out what factors affect delays in software delivery. And how are these factors related to each other? And yeah, with such insights, we can actually um, yeah, better understand what data and techniques are needed to improve effort estimation methods and to predict and manage delay risks. OK, so from the open-ended survey responses and to our validation with the repository data, we identified 25 factors that affect delays in software deliveries. And we organized these factors along five uh, risk dimensions. So the first one is the organizational uh, dimension, which actually concerns the uncertainty uh, surrounding the organizational environment in which your software delivery takes place. And three of the organizational factors are ranked to be among the top five most influential factors. So, for example, organizational alignment, um, which is actually uh, um, having a shared vision and mission, which can ensure the alignment between the implementation of your software delivery and your business strategy. And this is reported to contribute to your timely software delivery. Um, res respondents also reported that they are often hampered by organizational politics and the geographic distribution of the software teams. Next, we have process factors, uh, which represents the, the, the effectiveness and the maturity of uh, the way your software teams work. And in this category, uh, requirements refinement is the top mentioned factor that um, affects the delay in your software deliveries. In fact, it's the process of defining your software delivery and breaking it down into smaller work items. And missing or lacking details yeah, is reported to be the main uh, delay factor in software deliveries. We also have project factors, which represents the, uh, the inherent uh, complexity and uncertainty of a software project. And in this category, task dependencies uh, constitute the top mentioned delay factor. Uh, and these depend dependencies can occur across teams and across products due to um, unaligned priorities and inconsistent uh, schedules. 
We have the people-related factors as well. Um, so respondents reported that teams that are more stable, that are more skilled, more familiar with each other, they, um, they more often deliver software on time. And the final category are the technical factors um, and respondents reported to be often delayed by uh, yeah, technical dependencies and issues related to poor code documentation and unreliable IT infrastructure. But the factors in this category, um, they are reported to have yeah, the smallest impact across all categories. So to summarize, here's an overview of the top five factors that have the greatest impact on the delays in your software deliveries. So these are the factors that you should pay a great deal of attention to. And the interesting thing is, is that none of them are in software at all, right? They are related to your organizational environment and the quality of your processes. So how your software teams work. And we can also see that, um, yeah, they are also controllable. <laughs> So these are the factors that software teams often complain about, right? This is something that is happening to us. We don't have uh, any impact on it, but you can act upon your requirements refinements. You can invest in your dependency management, and you can also invest in a more healthy organizational culture. So um, we know that these are uh, the top factors that have an impact on your delay. Um, so this means we should regulate them. But then the next question is, how should we regulate them? So to answer that question, we looked into uh, different types of relationships between factors and on-time delivery. Um, we more specifically focused on three types of orthogonal effects. So we looked into direct relationships, indirect relationships, and contributory relationships. Um, and this enabled us to make a distinction between simple, complex, and condition-dependent relationships. I'm not going into the, the very specific uh, interactions between factors, but this actually enabled us to put all the results together. So the factors, the factor rankings and their relationships uh, to, con yeah, to create a conceptual framework of on-time software delivery as shown here. So it might look a bit overwhelming at first, um, but it actually visualizes the results that we discussed so far. So you can see the factors in the ellipses, the categories in the blue rectangles, and the arrows uh, visualize the sign and the direction of the relationships that we found. And the interesting thing is that factors interact hierarchically with each other. So organizational factors interact with people factors, which in turn impact the technical factors. Um, and these hierarchical uh, interactions indicate that changing one factor may impact another. This shows that on-time software delivery is affected by a system of interrelated factors um, that you should look at as a whole. So you should use a holistic approach to tackle the delays in your on-time software delivery, in your software delivery. So don't try to tackle the factors individually, but actually formulate systematic treatments based on these uh, direct indirect relationships to have the greatest impact on your delay. So I'll give you a concrete example. So the organizational factor executive support is perceived to have an indirect impact on timely software to, uh, delivery through team stability. And team stability directly affects how effective a team is in building skills and knowledge over time. And this affects the technical uh, factors, code quality and bugs or incidents, which uh, introduce necessary rework for the software team and thereby delay. So this means that establishing a stronger executive support may lead to more stable, more skilled teams that are better able to uh, deal with, um, uh, to maintain code quality and that can better resolve delays that are caused by bugs or incidents. And this path from hey, executive support to the technical factors is an example of many similar paths that we can derive from our conceptual framework and that enable us to um, yeah, make hypotheses about what can actually improve your uh, on-time software delivery. So what have we learned from this? Well, first we saw that on-time software delivery 
is affected by a system of interrelated uh, factors that require a holistic approach. Um, secondly, we saw that the top most influential factors are not in software, they are actually in your organizational environment and in the quality of your processes. So make sure to invest in your requirements refinement, uh, effective backlog refinement, uh, better dependency management, and in a healthy organizational environment. Uh, and at the same time, make sure to incorporate these factors in your effort estimation models. Because when you capture information, not only about the software task, but also about the processes, your team, your organization, you can actually enhance the, uh, the predictive power of your effort estimation models. Yes, so if you're interested in this work, uh, and if you would like to know more about the conceptual framework, how to apply it in practice, then feel free uh, to contact me. And thank you all. All right, thank you very much, Elvin. Uh, questions coming in from our viewers. And the, the first one is, where and how can I learn these, quote, political skills as a programmer? Because they certainly weren't part of my degree. <laughs> well, not of mine as well. Um, yeah, based on my own experience, it's something that you learn over time, I would say. So I I would say that um, yeah, as, if you, if you um, end up in more situations where you actually need these political skills to, for example, um, defend your product, to, to actually hey, um, create a business strategy, I think it will come with, uh, with experience, but also maybe with age. <laughs> okay. And a I think this is a related question. Um, is this the role or is, sorry, I'm just trying to make sense of this. Is this something that product managers or project managers are better able to do than developers? Is that part of their role to handle these non-technical issues? Yeah, that is definitely part of their responsibilities. So in my research, I've mainly looked at agile projects where they work with, hey, you have a software development team and you have a product owner. That's the person who actually represents uh, the, the the, the interest of the, the client, the customer, um, and it's also the person who bridges the gap between the software developers and the managers. But I think it would actually be nicer if we wouldn't need a product owner, right? If the environment would be that transparent that as a developer, you can go directly to management and, well, share your ideas and your, your wishes. Yeah. Okay, and I have one last question before we go on to the next speaker, and this is a personal question. Okay. Was there any evidence in your study that these things are easier to negotiate when management has come from a technical background, or are software engineers turned managers just as difficult to work with in this sense <laughs> as people coming in with, with MBAs? Yeah, yeah. So based on my own experience, I would say that it works better indeed if the if management has a tech, has a technical background, especially when it comes to the technical factors that I mentioned. So eh, um, wanting to spend more time on code refactoring, code quality, software testing. I think that it's easier to understand the added value of these factors if you do have a background in computer science. Yeah. 